Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we have a beautiful verse. We're in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 34, which says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. In reading this verse in context, Paul asks in the previous verse, Who can bring any charges against God's people? And his answer was simple. God is the one who justifies. By this, Paul meant that once God has justified one of his people, declared that person righteous because of their faith in Jesus, no accusation about any sin could convince God to overturn his verdict. If that's God's position, how could anyone condemn us? That's what Paul now asks. Nobody can condemn those of us who are in Jesus because Jesus is the one who died. Only Jesus can condemn us, but instead he has already taken our condemnation on himself. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because we are in Jesus by faith. We are so closely associated with him in God's eyes that Jesus' death has already paid the price for our sins when Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead and now interceding for us. And this is available to all who have put their faith and trust in Jesus. But only those who believe in who Jesus is and what he did will receive this. Jesus died to pay for our sins. He paid our debt. Our debt is paid. Now that God has justified us in Jesus, now God is for us. No accusation or condemnation can stand against us now in the throne room of God. There are four specific points, four reasons we as believers can never be guilty. Jesus died for our sins is number one. Number two, he rose again from the dead. Number three is he sits at the right hand of the Father. And number four is that he constantly confesses to God that he died to pay for our sins. We as Christians have someone to speak on our behalf like a lawyer in a courtroom. Jesus is our defense eternity. Jesus died for our sins. And Jesus rose from the dead back to life. Then Jesus ascended back up to heaven. And now Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father. And the right hand of the Father means a place of great honor and authority. There Jesus is speaking on our behalf. And if we sin, we have someone there who speaks for us to God the Father. Jesus speaks for us. Isn't this beautiful? To know that if we sin, we have a mediator there in heaven who testifies that we are his, that he forgave our sins, past, present, and future. A lot of people like to debate that, but they were all future sins when Jesus died. We hadn't been there to commit them yet, but Jesus paid for it all. And when we sin, all we got to do is repent. Those sins will be covered, and when the accuser of the brethren, just like you see in this, whenever we, we sin and we mess up and we repent, and he goes to the guy and says, see what they did today? Jesus says, oh, that's stricken from the record. I paid for it with my blood. All we got to do is put our faith and trust in him. It's that simple. And there may be some listening to this video right now who don't know Jesus today. You don't have a personal relationship with God. You may be playing games with God today. But with all the crazy weather around the world, all the wars breaking out, all the threats of nukes, playtime is over. It's time to stop playing games with God. Maybe you intellectually know who Jesus is. Maybe you know what Jesus did on the cross, but you don't take the time to talk to Jesus. You don't take the time to pray. You don't read your Bible. You don't even want to get to know him. You're not making time for God. Well, if you got to this point in the video, I believe that you're here for a reason. And I believe the Holy Spirit has given you another opportunity to answer this call. He's extending that gift of grace to you right now. All you have to do is accept it. So I want to share Jesus with you today. I want to show you who Jesus is, what he did for you on the cross, and what that means for you. I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. And this is because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of punishment for sin is death, which means because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve punishment 
We are all destined to destruction. We all deserve eternal separation from God, which means a life in hell. But here's the mercy of God. God loves you so much that God sent Jesus, who left heaven, became a flesh and blood human, 100% fully God, fully man. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. And on the cross, Jesus became sin for us to pay for our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put our sins on himself like a garment. Jesus took the punishment for our sins because as I've said, there's a punishment. But we're the ones who sin. We are the ones who deserve this punishment. We are the ones who deserve to be on that cross. Jesus was sinless, innocent of death. But instead of us being punished for what we do, Jesus took that punishment that we deserve in our place so that when we believe the gospel message and are saved, then we put on his righteousness because we are all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then it's like we are put in a washing machine. We are washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. And now when God looks at us, because we put on Jesus' righteousness, now God doesn't see our sin. Now he sees Jesus. The gospel message is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And he ascended back up to heaven, and he's coming back soon. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. Jesus is the door. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad cannot confess to God that you're a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn your salvation. Salvation cannot be found in, in anywhere else or anyone else. Salvation can only be obtained by Jesus Christ because Jesus' blood is the ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from an eternity in hell. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, which means you're not just saying words, you're not just trying to please someone or looking for a get out of hell free card, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you on the cross, and you truly do want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, that free ticket into heaven. This is Jesus' free gift of grace extended to you. All you have to do is accept it because we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity or that you think that you're a good person, that you never robbed or killed anyone because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, the same mentioned boasts. Grace means an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We do not deserve it. Meaning we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't even deserve to go to heaven. We do not even deserve salvation. We don't even deserve Jesus. But God loves us so very much that by his grace he made a way for us to be saved, for us to have fellowship with him. And we always follow the gospel. The warning of Jesus is in return because right now you can personally know who Jesus is. But one thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Tomorrow might be too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, maybe you don't think you're good enough, but none of us are. That's the point of this video today, is that Jesus paid the price for our sins. Now he intercedes because we cannot be good enough. Maybe you're waiting for your children to grow up. Maybe you're waiting to your finances secure. Whatever excuse it may be that you're telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer. There is no guarantee you'll live to see tomorrow. And if you die before coming to Jesus, then when you stand before God, it will be too late to make excuses. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Turn to Jesus today. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer, but these are just templates. An outline of what you can say to be saved, but it is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. 
But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And what you're doing is admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus. You will believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. You confess and repent of your sins, which means you're having a change of heart, a change of mind. You're turning away from your sins. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, then the Holy Spirit can lead you, guide you, and change you only if you let him. Whatever you may be battling, the Holy Spirit can take it away if you let him. Well, I pray you guys know this, but never take my word for it. No one on this earth has the answers. The most famous preacher doesn't have the answers. The smartest person in the world doesn't have the answers. Only God does. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking a random verse or listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes, you won't get the full picture. They won't even scratch the surface of what is in this Bible. So read and discover these stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible. The Bible is our roadmap, our GPS, our lantern, our flashlight to navigate through this ever-darkening world. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We'd love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you guys have this video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries. Or we'll see in the clouds. Look up our redemption draweth nigh. Maranatha.